Good morning! It is Friday, which has been released since last week, the day of the coding train, and that is what you are watching live on YouTube. Um, I am here. My name is Dan Yol, <coughs> Chief Man, and I am here to do some coding stuff. That's what happens on the coding train. It's a person with a green screen and a laptop in a room with lights that are very warm and new cameras that don't shut off except for last week when they did shut off and I'm hoping that doesn't happen this week because I have a new thermostat that I turned down to make it cooler and it does not feel cooler in here at all. <laughs> Currently, in fact, I don't have a cam roaming camera to show this to you. It says it is 78.1 degrees in this room. <laughs> The temperature on the thermostat is set to 70 degrees. And in fact, in fact, I even see one of these little like snowflake icons, this little snowflake icon <laughs> that shows that the air is on. And over here, hmm, people are telling me maybe the sound is quiet, I'm not sure. There's a vent up there. You can't see the vent. That's the vent. There's air coming out. It's warm air. Oh, that's warm air. That's weird. There's another vent over here. Let's go examine this other vent. This is what you tuned in for, right? A crazy person talking about the air temperature. Climate change is real, people. It's getting very warm in here. Uh, go to the whiteboard. Now, one thing I did, which is nice, is I changed the settings of this particular whiteboard camera. You might have noticed in previous videos that as I walk in, the white balance starts to go crazy, the focus goes in and out, so it's no longer autofocus. In fact, as I come in here closer, I am blurry, which makes me much better looking. <laughs> but hopefully I've tuned the focus well on this, uh, on the whiteboard, so as I draw, that's where the focus will be. Also some vents here. You don't feel any air coming out of them. Hmm. All right, so I'm going to be here anyway. I, I, my glasses are all like <laughs> messed up today. They're like, there's schmutz on them, and I can't see. This is not a good start. <laughs> Highly professional operation we've got going here. I do have a thing of buttons. Uh, change the cameras and stuff. Uh, let's see what's happening in the chat. Hello from Peru. It is also 1535 in South Africa. So processing or P5JS? Um, <laughs> um, <clears throat> today, all right, so let me just get right to the point, uh, which is to talk about what today's topic is. So today's topic, I'm going to look at a particular pre-trained machine learning model called Sketch RNN. And this is work of researchers at Google, um, which I will reference and point to um, when I get there. So Sketch RNN is a model that's trained off of a data set of drawings. So I've used it before in previous coding challenges or videos, but today, I'm so excited about this. I want to program an example where the user draws, the user stops drawing, and the AI or the computer or the algorithm or the pre-trained machine learning model takes over and predicts what the next stroke should be to create a drawing of something. Maybe it's a cat, maybe it's a rainbow, maybe it's unpredictable. So that's what I will be building today. And by the time I leave, which is around two-ish hours from now, did I start last week at 9 a.m.? I remember I did two and a half hours, but I have a thing Anyway, I've got about two hours, so by the time I leave, hopefully that's going to be built. Uh, a couple other things I want to address. Uh, first, let's see if this works. Uh, thank you to the sponsor of the Coding Train live streams, Brilliant.org. Uh, Brilliant.org is a website for lifelong learning with a lot of interactive puzzles and full interactive courses that you can learn through doing. 
um, and you can check it out at brilliant.org slash coding train. I will come back later in the live stream and look at the daily challenge. There's a daily challenge every day on brilliant.org and, and try to solve it along with you, the viewer watching. The other thing I want to do is address the swirling controversy around the coding train, <laughs> which is um, this new series that I um, <clears throat> launched recently called Coding in the Cabana, which I'm really uh, excited about. That's me in my sunflower shirt, which I think I might actually be able to wear. I was afraid I couldn't wear the sunflower shirt here due to the green screen and it's got green on it. Ah, I, ah, my shoe just came untied. We'll fix that in a minute, but I think that I can. And um, this is a new style of video that I'm doing, which uh, I'm recording um, at home in this little uh, shed, which <laughs> just sounds a little fancy, I'm calling it cabana. Uh, and I did a video of the uh, Mora Rose. It's kind of like my coding challenges, but maybe with a, a, a slightly more relaxed vibe to it, just trying to try out new things. Um, and I've already recorded the second one, which um, I guess I, you know, I don't know, am I spoiling it? If you don't want to know what it is, Close your ears, go like this, la, 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 for the next minute, or skip ahead if you're watching the recording. Um, three, two, one, uh, the Colotz Conjecture. So I'm going to do a visualization of this thing called the Colotz Conjecture, inspired by some number file videos. Um, but there was a major issue with, these vi with this video. Let's see if I can find it. Chalk. I love that video, but the sound of the chalk is killing my ears. <laughs> and everywhere in the comments, chalk, chalk. Oh, well, I, I guess I'd have to keep scrolling down. There's a lot more comments here. Eventually, if I search for chalk or scratch, uh, there's a lot, a lot of comments about the chalkboard. And just to uh, show you what I'm talking about, also, you can see the chalkboard. Um, so we're talking about this thing here, this chalkboard here. I wanted to have a bit of an analog feel to drawing and diagramming. You know, I certainly could use a tablet. And that might be something I do in the future. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because I used the chalkboard for the second video, which I created, shot, and recorded before getting all those comments. So I'm working with a Coding Train viewer, Nathan, who is, uh, has some audio engineering expertise to see if we can lessen that chalk sound at least. And then I think what I'm going to attempt, I, I hope to maybe record another one this weekend, I'm kind of doing these on the weekend, um, is try doing, uh, certainly I could use a tablet or a Wacom, board or something, something like that. But uh, again, I want to keep the analog feel for now. So I think what I'm going to try is an overhead camera and just paper and marker um, on the table. <laughs> so uh, there you go. That's my spiel about coding in the cabana. I also haven't figured out, and this is something um, that I've been discussing with uh, Violet, who has uh, come on board to help me uh, with some of the GitHub repos stuff. I don't know if Violet's in the chat. Say hello to Violet. Um, but um, the coding in the Cabana video currently isn't on the website. So I guess at present, probably, um, but a lot of people made more rows, uh, uh, community contributions. So I would like to figure out a way for people to share those. Maybe there should be another coding in the Cabana page that's different, or they just end up here on this page, but they have a little like a little visual treatment that shows that one of the Cabana videos. I don't know. Open to your suggestions if you have ideas about that. The website is a community created project. Um, so you're welcome to contribute to it if you're interested in that. Um, Simon is alerting to me that if you are part of the Coding Train member program, <laughs> it's not really a program, but I'm calling it that to make it sound very official, which you can sign up through the join button on YouTube, uh, you will uh, get an invitation to a Slack chat, Slack, uh, it's not a Slack channel, it's a Slack workspace, which ha and has various channels in it, one of which there's a chat going during this live stream that I'm looking at right now, and Simon created a brilliant channel so we can discuss the brilliant problems there. Uh, that's my spiel. Is that what I said? Hey, how are you, Dan? I hear that you were sick. Ah, and Daniel Garden, Daniel Garden, uh, where's, there's, uh, 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 CJ, you and Daniel Garden should be garden friends. Um, I'm surprised you don't have a Discord. Okay. So this is something I've been discussing with Sai, who is the community manager for the coding train, and hopefully they're going to maybe post 
uh, a poll or get, um, th get this discussion going in the uh, Slack channel. Uh, there is a Coding Train Discord that somebody started up. I popped in there for like five minutes and then I kind of like got freaked out and I haven't gone back in. Uh, you know, I'm old and don't know how these things work. The internet is very confusing to me. Oh, get off my Slack workspace. I, act I really don't. I don't love Slack. I mean, I like a lot of things about Slack. I don't love using it for the coding train. Um, it's, um, the messages aren't archived. It's a closed space. I mean, I'm making that decision to make it a closed space. But I don't really have the budget to pay for uh, the sort of like version. It's like $5 per user per month, which would sort of defeat, I suppose, I suppose I could maybe do that if that is what the community thinks is best. I could figure out a way to do that. But anyway, so I've been thinking about switching over to Discord, and um, one idea is to use, take over that unofficial Discord or maybe make a separate one, or I don't know. There could be a Discord that anybody can join the, with like certain channels that are just for the members. I really don't know what makes the most sense here. So I look to you, the community, to help advise me on this and uh, speak, speak up and voice your thoughts about how um, the community can be uh, accessible and inclusive and welcoming to everyone. And that's something that's a really big priority for me. And one of the things that I've learned with dealing with online communities is you can't just say that and can't just make things that people can sign up for. You have to be very intentional about ways of inviting people in and, and, and fostering that kind of environment. So hopefully I'm doing um, a good job at that. I'm sure there are things that I'm doing not well and, I, and, and you should never be, uh, you should always feel empowered to send me a message and let me know about how the community feels for you. Okay. Um, switching to Discord is cheaper. Uh, Discord with member channels says Ben. What about Facebook? I'm uh, not not a fan. Not a fan of Facebook. I do have a Facebook account. I kind of I would like to pretend that I never look at it. <laughs> Mostly true, but I think I do catch myself lurking in there from time to time. There is a Coding Train Facebook page that doesn't get a lot of attention, but could be something I use more. But I don't think that the um, Facebook groups is the right mechanism for the community to interact with each other. That, that I feel pretty clear on. Um, okay, Loch Ness Co. writes, I'm in the Discord. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, <laughs> TMC writes, it's the chalk itself that's weird and all high tech. Um, so Loch Ness, feel free. If the, the Discord at the moment is an unofficial Discord, I. You know, I don't have any um, oversight or purview in it. It's people have self-organized to, to chat and talk about the coding train, which I, I love that that's happening. So, Co, you should feel free to share it. And we can, um, you know, whoever, I don't know if there are some administrators of that uh, Discord want to reach out to me to talk about if we want to try to make that more of an official thing. Uh, and yes, I mean, there's so many opportunities to do bots and interface with it. I have so much that I want to do to upgrade my streaming, but the truth of the matter is, because I also have a full-time job, um, I really don't, um, I don't spend the amount of time on the coding train that maybe other people who are doing uh, content creation and live streaming full-time are, for better or worse. That's just the reality. Um, and I am trying to hire more people to help me with this, to expand the, the feature set of what I'm doing, um, as well as, um, Figuring out new ways to do stuff like create the content, um, create this new coding the cabana series from home. Um, but some things that I want to do just off the top of my head that just to, to mention and people can remind me about this are I want to get uh, interstitial animations for starting and ending and taking breaks and that sort of thing. Um, having more bots that are um, kind of doing moderation in the chat or just that are fun and playful that can happen in the chat, whether it's through Discord or the YouTube chat. That's stuff I want to do. I am working to launch a new merchandise store with Standard. Standard is a company that um, helps out creators. They're really a community of creators and they help with sponsorships and merchandise stores and things. You can check them out at standard.tv. They also have a new streaming system called Nebula, uh, which you should definitely check out. And I'm um, some of my content is on there, and I'm thinking about new ways to put content on there as well. 
But, um, but once we get the new uh, standard store up and running, then I'm going to have new uh, rewards for people who sign up for members and patrons and that kind of thing. So that's just taking a very long time. And if you're curious and have questions about that, you can reach out to um, community manager Sai also. Uh, and if you tweet at The Coding Train on Twitter, that's um, Sai who manages that account. And also on Instagram. The Instagram has changed. It is now instagram.com slash the dot coding dot train. So this is the coding train Instagram, also run by Sai, um, and um, you can just sort of check out stuff that's being posted there. I'm hoping that we can, I can do more with sharing your work, the people who are watching and making things on Instagram, and that's something I'm trying to set up some new processes for. Um, all right. Now, what else do I've got to say? Oh, also, you should follow my cats on Instagram, Mango, and let's check on. Let's check in on them, Mango and Goose. Um, look at this. There we go. That's Greta. Hi, little girl. I will see you later tonight. This is very cute. Uh, that's also Greta, and this is uh, Evie. Greta and Evie. Look at those ears. Have you ever seen a cat with like fox ears like that? They're pretty amazing. They're kittens. I love them. <laughs> They're super fun. You can follow them on Instagram. <laughs> ah, I knew there was a reason. We're going to make drawings of cats. All right, let's have a little fun. I should probably do this. No, you know what? I'm going to take a break. I want to mention a coding train viewer, RedFoo, uh, who has created a game called NoisyFoo.io and actually did a live stream about it. Um, Red Foo apparently um, learned to code from watching a lot of my videos. Also, shout out to uh, Coding Garden with CJ. The game that Red Foo made, I believe the back end was, um, I gotta answer this question from Jonas or Jonas in a second. Um, the, uh, the back end of Red Foo's uh, game Noisy Foo was created from, uh, based on tutorials from CJ, excellent coding channel if you want to find a channel that live streams really often. I mean, I can't speak for CJ. I don't know what his future plans are, but I see a pop-up of almost every day of a live stream from CJ. So I highly recommend you check out uh, Coding Garden with CJ. Um, all right. So I'm a, maybe I will uh, come back and uh, play this game a little later. Let's just play it once right now, just for fun. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh you, you know, the, here's the thing. Actually, we'll come back and see how more I got to get a certain sound effect to happen. So I got to change my system preferences here. And I got to go under sound. And I got to change this to multi output device. So I think now you should hear the audio from the game. Let's just see. Did that come through? It should have. Let's try one more time. Oh, 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 oh. Shoot. You <laughs> get a, like a slightly better score here. Doom, doom, bum, 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 bum. Holy shit, man! There it is. <laughs> that is like the thing that makes me so happy. Uh, I've been saying it all week. <laughs> My kids are very tired of me talking about this game, Noisy Foo. <clears throat> uh, leaderboard. Let's see. Where am I here? Coding train. Coding train. Hello, Coding Train. Your ranking is 58. Oh, I dare you to try to beat my high score here. Coding Train, I got a high score of two. Two. Take that. Uh, David is writing, uh, Schiffman, did you see that I beat your score? Yes. I think almost everybody on here has beaten my score. There are a few people who are lower. But uh, have fun with this. I had a lot of fun with this. Check out Red Foo. I don't think Red Foo needs me to promote his stuff, but... Um, Check it out, it's a lot of fun. Maybe I'll, I'll try to play it a little more later. <sighs> okay. <coughs> Holy. <clears throat> if only I could play and dance to some of Red Foo's music without getting <laughs> like the YouTube copyright engine spinning, that would be kind of fun. I'm sorry, I'm sorry for party rocking. That's all I have to say. <coughs> now, <clears throat> moving on. <laughs> My glasses, by the way, I'm now realizing really could use an upgrade. <laughs> um, let's move on to the topic of today. 
So uh, give me a minute here to pull up some links that I want to refer to. Oh, ukulele tuner submissions. Um, hold on. So, um, uh, Lokesh writes, can you react to ukulele tuner submissions? So, I think I did a bunch of those already. I don't know that a lot of new ones have come in. Maybe Lokesh, I don't know, maybe you, you posted an, a new one. And Alexander, this, if, you, uh, if you're really looking for the drawing with Sketch RNN content, <laughs> And that's all you want. I might suggest waiting for the edited version that will come out. My process has gotten a little bit slower. There's some good things about that and some not so great things about that. But um, that will come out soon. Um, but most of the live stream is, yes, me wasting your time. That is 100% accurate. Tune out. Go, the, the, it's a beautiful day in New York City. Um, I'm training for the marathon, exercise, go outside, play some music, meditate. All of these things are probably more valuable uses of your time than this. If you want the tutorial, uh, wait for the edited version, I would say. Um, I Caleb is eating oatmeal. Mwah. Oatmeal, my breakfast of choice. Big fan. Big fan of oatmeal. Oatmeal, huge fan of oatmeal. Just huge fan. Oatmeal, huge fan. I was responding to something. Oh, ukulele tuner. But I did. I'm glad that you mentioned that because um, let's find the ukulele tuner video. Um, I got to work on my SEO apparently. Uh, oh boy, coding train. We're going to get there. There we go. Um, because I did want to mention a comment that came in recently, which was really helpful to me. Um, let's try maybe sorting by newest first. Here we go. So this is from uh, Wisp Yart, interesting name, um, from, uh, from on, on YouTube. And Wisp Yart writes, one thing that I need to point out, let's see, is that your detection of closest note is not working properly because notes are existing in sense scale, 100 cents per note, 1,200 cents per octave, while you are trying to operate in frequency scale hertz. The problem is that the relation between frequency scale and note scale is not linear, so closest note by frequency does not equal closest note by sense distance. So it sounds like from that description, which you know I'm assuming is accurate, uh, Wispyart sounds knowledgeable and is writing in a thoughtful manner, but I, I haven't like fact checked this, and I'm sure people in the chat might be able to uh, offer their thoughts as well, but that if I apply some additional math, uh, in terms of the values that are coming out of the machine learning model uh, and think about this other scale, then I might be able to uh, have a more effective interaction and visualization of how close I am to the correct note. Um, here is how, and so uh, Wispyart maybe has made their own version um, in Scala, Scala, I don't know how to say that, it's another programming language. And then here is a live pitch detector that also uses CREP. So let's look at this. Um, and see how this one works. I'm um, going to say allow. Um, and let's, let's get the ukulele here. Well, this doesn't appear to be working. Hello. This was not in tune. I didn't tune. This is whatever all the strings were left over from last week. That was my little improvisation. Uh, I don't know why. Um, but I'll, I'll investigate this later. But that's something that I would love to address or think about. And thank you so much. You know, I don't catch, uh, these days I'm not catching all of the comments that are on YouTube, but I try to keep a look. And every once in a while, uh, something really thoughtful and helpful comes in. And um, thank you to that. <laughs> User interaction. Oh. I don't know, Simon is telling me something. I don't know what Simon's telling me. 
Did I not do something correctly? Click, click, click. Hello, hello, click, click, click. User interaction, click, click, click. <laughs> all right. Uh, <coughs> all right, but I want to move on because I want to get to what I, the topic of the day. Hold on, everyone. I'm getting an important message. Simon, thank you for the reminder about the user interaction. I understand what you're saying now. Uh, Mathieu is pointing out that maybe the focus is a little bit fuzzy, and I think it is. I think that, let me see, um, let me see how I can best fix this. By the way, I did a little investigation, and it appears that there is a way for me to, I'm using these Sony Alpha 7 III cameras, and it appears, and by the way, I think this one went off. Oh, that's not good. It's getting hot in here. <coughs> it's getting hot in here. <coughs> um, so, um, I, I believe there's a way that I can remote control these cameras from uh, through Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, which if there's an app or even from the computer, I could adjust the focus and white balance and that kind of thing. Um, but what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put the train whistle here, which is a pretty far back, approximately where I stand. Let's <laughs> maybe that, and then <laughs> let's just put it here. And no, this isn't going to work. I'm trying to, I, last week I had the mug that I could focus on. I think what I could do is I could just pull my laptop back further. I do want to fix the focus. Uh, what do I have? I have a book of random digits. Ah, here, this will work. This is like, by accident, I am buzz marketing a product that I don't mean to, but I really like it, but this is not an official sponsor. But I can use this to do the focus. So this is about more like where I'm standing um, than the actual laptop screen. So I think if I go and adjust the focus on that, give me a second here, I'm walking over to the camera. This is a one person operation in here. Out of focus, out of focus. And I can even go a little past it because I'm a little bit further behind it. That should be better. How's this look? Better? Better, worse, better, worse. If I move back, I think this is better. I think this is better, yes?
so warm in this room. Oh, it's my invisible cloth. Magic. Go O's. Oh, you can't even see me over there. You switch the camera. <clears throat> I hope Alexander is not continuing to watch. <laughs> hope they went outside. 96,125. You know, I think I'm on the same page every time. Let's go a little further. Ooh, let's read some. Today on the coding train, Gaussian deviates. Two point six five four. Oh, that's a negative. Negative two point six five four. Negative point three one two. Point one seven zero. Negative one point six four five. Point zero seven nine. 0 0.414, 0 0 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.414, 0.
and happen to be there on the homepage. <laughs> okay, we gotta get started with this before the everything starts to go to crud. <clears throat> We're gonna do this, are we gonna do this in the P5 web editor? Yeah, why not? How am I feeling about the P5 web editor today? I think I can make this happen. Uh, interactive drawing with sketch RNN. And uh, okay. Could you increase the volume? Your talking is a bit quiet. So nobody else has said that. Um, thank you for noting that, MX. Um, and, um, but I'm afraid to increase the volume because sometimes when I do that in the recording, there's clipping or peaking. And so I'm going to assume that maybe um, you, that that's not a universal uh, feeling. But please let me know, uh, particularly in the Slack channel, if. Um, which I can catch those messages a bit more quickly if there are any issues. Um, all right. Uh, all right. I'm about to get started. How, what's it? It's, all, it's only 40 minutes in by the time I code. Well, how's this mug? This is crazy. The, this is the mug. You might remember this infamous mug. And the keying is so much better. This is a green mug, but it's a slightly different shade of green. Uh, that the keying is actually uh, so much uh, uh, more precise in this new uh, studio that I'm recording in. I am three decibels less than the old setup. I am happy to turn it louder, uh, but I am concerned. It's not. The nice thing is it can always get turned up in when the edited version happens. Well, let's, let me, let me try something. Oh, let me tie my shoe. <laughs> Enjoy this dot. As always, I always forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do dot, this dot. That's one, two. This dot. I just turned it up a tiny bit. This dot song. This dot, this dot, this dot. Never forget this dot, this dot. All right, people are saying that it is quiet. This dot, this dot. Turned up a little bit. This dot. The laptop on is loud right now. This dot. Never forget this. This dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. Oh, why did I stop that? As always, I always Sorry, everybody. this stop, this stop, this stop, this stop. I'm gonna do this stop, this stop. I'm gonna do this, this stop, this stop, this stop. I'm gonna do this stop, this stop. I'm gonna do stop, this stop, this stop, this stop, this stop song. This stop, this stop, this stop. Never forget to this stop. This stop, this stop, this stop, this stop song. This stop. Thank you, everybody. My mic was off. I'm going to wait till uh, everybody realizes that I figured that out. And um, I was playing with the audio. I know the sound is off. The sound's off. I have to wait about 30 seconds now. Yes. Thank you, uh, CJ. The microphone is muted. <laughs> 
I just don't, I want to wait till the messages stop coming in telling me that. Uh, okay. And now people are telling me it's too quiet. Okay. Uh, sounds good now. Here we go. Ready, everybody? Ready? <coughs> Hello and welcome to a coding challenge, drawing with the computer with an AI. Ooh, spooky Halloween. No, <laughs> no Halloween. No Halloween. No Halloween references. Those don't. Those aren't very evergreen. Although it is, it's just about time to watch my arrow function <laughs> videos again. <laughs> <coughs> Hello and welcome to a coding challenge, interactive drawing with the computer. So what you are looking at right here is a demo from the Magenta project. This is the sketch RNN demo. And what's happening here is I, the, a person, is, can walk up to this computer machine <laughs> and start drawing. Oops, uh, let me clear. <laughs> can I have one more shot, one more shot. It's 80, just I want you to know, it's over 80 degrees in this room right now. <laughs> the thermostat is on. It's set to 70 degrees. It's very hot. It's very warm. I feel really warm. <clears throat> Take three. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to a coding challenge. Interactive sketch RNN drawing. <laughs> you realize that um, this is how I just basically spend my entire day, just like saying stuff, oh, trying again, over and over again. Hello, and welcome to a coding challenge, drawing with sketch RNN. Now, you might be wondering, what sketch RNN? That's OK. That's good. If you don't know what it is, you're in the right place. I'm going to try at best. But my, try, try my best to explain sketch RNN and give you some background reading material that you can look into to do a deeper dive and then make a project like this one right here. I'm going to attempt to recreate this exact project. So this is a demo on the Magenta. Uh, Magenta is a uh, project around machine learning, AI, and art from Google Research. Um, and this is a project where you, the user, or me right now, can uh, I'm gonna clear the screen, you can draw. I'm gonna draw like a little circle here and another little like this. I'm gonna draw a little tail and then see if the computer can pick up where I left off and continue drawing a cat. And you can see it's doing this over and over again. I can also switch to say a uh, pineapple. This will be fun. And I can hit clear and I can maybe I can start the pineapple and see, <laughs> oh, look at that, see what comes next. Wow, this is like magic, but it's not magic. This is machine learning. So if you want the, oh, no. I think as soon as it gets to be 80 degrees is when this happens. Let's see if the focus at least stays today. One thing I could do is, did the focus even, the focus doesn't appear to have stayed. Why does the focus even like die? Uh, yeah, I'm very out of focus. I'm gonna need my today's coding train. I need a like brilliant poster <laughs> that I could just put up here. <sighs> you know, new cameras, they don't go to sleep, all this work and I am just destined destined to never be able to live stream without cameras that power themselves off. This is actually worse than it was before. At least before it happened on a schedule and the focus didn't get lost. One thing I'm gonna do just for briefly is I'm gonna open the door. I don't know if this door is gonna make its way and get some cool air in here. It's a little bit crazy that I'm doing this because now I am actually live streaming with the door propped open. <laughs> so anybody walking by in the hallway, hello. It's early enough in the morning that there aren't too many people in here, but I can feel the air coming in. Whew. <laughs> Ujuman writes, the pre-show dance was too hot for the camera. 
Um, I hopefully the air coming in here is going to help. This, by the way, I'm not. I will not be back live streaming next Friday without this being fixed. <laughs> so um, hopefully I can get this resolved. I'm just going to let some air come in here. Actually, I, I, um, and uh, maybe I'll get a. Maybe I'll refill my coffee. That's always a good idea. <laughs> Keep the mic on. This is a bad idea, but you're going to hear me talking as I go over to the kitchen. <laughs> I should probably just get some ginger tea. I usually switch to ginger tea around 11 a.m. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> I'll be right back. Snowflake, there we go. Oh boy. You know what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to also let the camera be off for 10 minutes. You have a fan in there. No, but clearly that would help. Um, maybe I'll go look for a fan very briefly. Because that could help for sure. But I think if I leave the camera off for a little bit, um, it'll give it more of a chance to cool down, I guess. Let me turn the lights off for a second. asks how old is the camera. It's brand new. It is a Sony Alpha 7. I guess I can move over to here for a second. I turned the lights off in this room. <laughs> the lights are LED lights. They really shouldn't heat up the room so much, but I think the power supplies get kind of warm, and so it, it, things kind of heat up. So the lights are off now. If you have a fan, that will move the lights heat away. Turn the music off, please. go quickly look and see if there's a fan um, somewhere on the floor here. I'll be right back. I'm going to leave my mic on. I know it might, actually that's dangerous because if I go too far, the wireless connection might start to make weird noise. So let me mute them. I'm going to mute the mic um, and I will be right back. I'm going to look for a fan. I'll just leave it here um, drawing a pineapple. Where was the pineapple? Pineapple. Pineapple, there we go. Um, all right, and then I'm gonna put this music back on. Sorry, everybody. I'll be back, I'm looking for a fan. 
Bonjour tout le monde. Well, it's already cooled down to 78 degrees in there. Uh, it's the weirdest pineapple ever. Um, I'm gonna power the camera back up. I've got to attempt to move on. Uh, uh, someone is looking for a fan, so if we get a knock on the door, it means the fan is found. Uh, I'm going to have to turn these lights on. I've been there the whole time. All right, I'm going to try to move on. Okay. All right, I'm very sorry about this. Uh, I'm going to push through and see if I can get this project completed. Um, I have a little over an hour, <laughs> which is not good. I'm also going to, um, so in about a half an hour, I'll take a break, um, and hopefully the cameras are going to comply with me. We got it down to 77 degrees, <laughs> dropped by three points just opening the door and turning the lights off for a few minutes. And maybe a fan will arrive. Okay. Um, <clears throat> All right, here we go. 
Whoa, that's an interesting pineapple. <clears throat> It's, it's really, it's particularly sad because I lost all the momentum and like what I was talking about, but this will get edited together again somehow. So what, what did I last say? I'm, you know what, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to end up repeating myself so I can get moving here. I'm so sorry, everybody. Ah! <clears throat> So sketch RN, sketch RNN is a pre-trained is a, no. sketch RNN is a machine learning model that was trained on drawings, drawings of a lot of different things, like this pineapple here. Um, <clears throat> the data set that was used to train it is a data set called the Quick Draw data set, which has about 50 million drawings in it. I believe in a, around 300. I, th I think it's 384. <laughs> um, but I'm not really sure. Um, <clears throat> the ske sketch RNN was trained on a data set of drawings. That, draw the, that data set is from the Google Quick Draw data set. So oh, I really I lost all my momentum and energy, and I'm so <laughs> depressed. <laughs> I should just play like the noisy foo game or read some random numbers, but I, I got to push forward. Overheating is a common problem with the Sony A7. Room temperature shouldn't be the problem writes Max. Do you think, Max, that just having like a small fan that's pointed at the camera would help? Ugh. I mean, the whole point of these cameras is to, yeah, I don't know. All right. Uh, uh, sorry. I got I to gotta, I gotta go. I got to move on. Okay. The quick draw data set has millions and upon millions of drawings in it and was collected as people played this game called Quick Draw, um, where the, the player is asked to draw a particular category. And I think there are, th I think it's 384, but somewhere well over 300 different kinds of drawings in this data set. If you want to learn more about what a recurrent neural network is and how the model was trained, I'll reference a few uh, things that I'll link in the description. First, you should definitely check out this paper by uh, David Ha and Douglas Eck from Google Brain, where they present the Sketch RNN pre-trained model. Um, you can read this blog post from 2017 that is on the Magenta Project's blog. Oh, time out. I think maybe there's a fan. <laughs> Oh, you found one. Awesome. Donated by Rob. Okay, I will give it a try. Okay. Thank There's you so much. There's also a magnet on it if you want yeah. to. Yeah, oh, interesting. Okay. All right. Yes, thank you. <laughs> wish, oh, this is going to be fun. I wish it, uh, <clears throat> All right. I mean, I think what I'm going to do is go um, point this at the camera. But... First, I'm going to just test it by plugging it into the wall here. And then, can we place it? I don't have like long flowing hair, and I don't have, I don't know what the right music would be. That's the highest setting. No? My flowing hair? Is it working? <laughs> okay. All right, so I'm putting this on the floor right now. Um, actually, you know what? I have a table. Well, I'm going to move the table right underneath the camera. I am going to, is this table go higher? I think it does. See where the. It's fine though. Close enough. I am going to put the fan on the table, pointing it directly at the camera, and plugging it in. I mean, it's making a loud noise. That's not great. But I think as I step away, you'll hear that less. get it even closer. It's so weird. This table definitely was higher at one point. I'm not going to 
not going to worry about that right now. Hopefully this is an improvement. All right, there is a fan. Let me just put my face in front of the camera, see if I'm getting the air. Yeah. That's my ear, by the way. My ear. I'm hoping that's going to help keep the camera cool. What do we think? What are the chances this is going to work? Put it as low as possible to get the cold air and make it flow up towards the camera. Um, Nick is asking, you're going to say anything about the Red Foo collab. So first of all, I wouldn't call it a collab. <laughs> I mean, uh, Red Foo made this whole thing all on his own without anything that I did other than existing and maybe providing some video tutorials. Um, but I did play the game a little earlier, and I, I wish I had more time to play it more. Um, um, let me just check. Uh, let me just check, is the sound reasonable right now? Like, is the sound of the fan too loud? Can hear the fan a bit, but no problem. I could turn on the noise reduction, but I think I'm going to leave the noise in there. We can always post-process it. Perfect. Okay. Great. Thank you, everybody. I kind of want to just start this whole thing over. I know, I know you're all going to be upset by that, but I feel like I've lost the momentum, and it's going to help me to have that back. So this I don't need. I'm going to start this coding challenge over. Set auto power off temp to high. Oh, is there actually a setting on the camera? So Abraham is saying set, so if someone can do, I can't really do that easily right now. Unfortunately, it would involve me like taking the camera off. It's mounted directly to the wall. So to be able to see the menu, I have to remove it. So unless the problem becomes really terrible, I might do that. But um, uh, if, someone, if, uh, if that's a legitimate thing, I will look into that. All right, here we go, everybody. Take five million. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to a coding challenge, interactive drawing with SketchRNN. Now, maybe you're watching this and thinking to yourself, huh, what's SketchRNN? Then you're in the right place, because I will explain to you a bit about what SketchRNN is and uh, provide you with links in the description to a lot of background material if you want to do a deeper dive into the machine learning model that is SketchRNN. But what I'm going to build in this video that you're watching is a, my own version of this exact project. So this is a project on the Magenta website. Magenta is a uh, project from Google that is around uh, creativity and AI. There's a lot of music examples um, with the Magenta project. And what you're seeing here is uh, the AI, so to speak. I mean, it's really a machine learning model making predictions, um, drawing a cat. And I can hit clear here, and I can begin drawing the cat. Like, I could just stop there, and it's going to try to fill in the rest of the cat for me. Let's see, if I try to draw one like this with, like, a, like a sort of body and like a tail, we can sort of see what happens. So this is the, I've used SketchRNN before because I can generate a drawing from nothing with SketchRNN, but what I want to do in this video is create something where the person using the computer draws with the mouse, but you could imagine all sorts of interface interaction ideas that you could do, and then has the machine learning model takes over and finishes the drawing. And you can see there are quite a few other models. The, uh, Sketch RNN, uh, the SketchRNN model isn't one model. It's actually a collection of many models based on these categories because the data that was used to train the machine learning model is from a project called QuickDraw. So QuickDraw is a game that you can play, also from Google, where uh, the, the, the website prompts you to draw something, and then it tries to like guess to see if like you're drawing the correct thing. And you, people playing that game, Google collected all of those drawings. So I think there's a lot of interesting questions around the data set itself. Um, but it is an open source data set. It has 50 million drawings. I think there are 384 categories. I'm not 100% sure about that. Um, and so that's the data set that it was trained on. The kind of machine learning model architecture is something called a recurrent neural network. 
So maybe at some point I'll have some video tutorials that look more closely at what a recurrent neural network is. If you want to learn more, I'll definitely, there's a wonderful article that I read um, that, I'll, that I'll put in this video's description. Pause for a second. Rohan and Lenny, recurrent neural network. Yeah. Uh, this, is, this is a wonderful article that I read that really taught me a lot about how recurrent neural networks work. It's quite technical, but uh, also uh, pretty friendly and uses some um, nice examples to describe how they're working. But you can also read the original paper by David Ha and Douglas Eck, uh, researchers at Google Brain, that describe um, the sketch RNN model, how it was trained, and all of the details um, behind it, including you know, the real lower level machine learning uh, math details. Uh, luckily for us, uh, I also mentioned there's this nice blog post. Pause for a second. I put on Do Not Disturb. I put on Do Not Disturb. When I live stream, I put on Do Not Disturb. It's off for some reason. On, you're on. Okay. <coughs> You can also read this excellent blog post um, on the Magenta blog called Draw Together with a Neural Network, which uh, mentions other collaborators and um, uh, gives you uh, more details also about how Sketch RNN works. Guess what, though? I'm going to start coding now because one of the projects that I work on, which is an open source library for machine learning called ML5.js, is built on top of TensorFlow.js, which is Google's open source JavaScript uh, version of TensorFlow, machine learning, <laughs> open source library. And uh, ML5 also includes the sketch RNN model as part of it. So if I go here to reference and I sort of scroll down here onto the left, interesting left, this is actually a mistake. This shouldn't be here under text. <laughs> so I'm going to just sort of like, uh, I can find the Sketch RNN page and read a bit more about Sketch RNN and get some starter code. Aim the fan at the camera wall. Interesting. So far, I'm, I'm feeling good about it. I shouldn't, shouldn't say anything because it hasn't powered off yet, but mm, that's good. It is 81.4 degrees in here, people. 81.4. Sweat dripping down my face. It's like a sauna. Saunas are good for you, right? They're good for my back. I have back issues, but I'm feeling pretty good. Did you know that I'm training for the marathon? <laughs> I'll say more about that later. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I should mention uh, Ross is saying the ML5 page is so buggy. The website is actually going uh, a big, is, is, uh, is having an overhaul right now. So there's a lot of issues on the website. So I'm going to try not to lean on using it too much during this. Uh, video, but hopefully in the next few days and into next week, um, it'll a lot of this stuff. But please, if you're finding things that aren't working or missing, feel free to file those as issues. Okay. Um, let me just quickly also do this. Oh yeah. Let's see here. Let, just give me a second here to organize the screen. I think 400 by 400 is going to be fine, and that means I can move it over to here, which means I can move this over a little bit more. I can also stand much further over. So if I stand over here, then I can move this back over this way. All right, I think this is going to be good. How's the font size? I think it's okay. Uh, here we go. First thing that I need to do if I'm going to use the ML5 library is make sure to import it into my P5 sketch. So on the getting starting page, um, there's actually a P5 web editor template I could click on, but I'm actually just going to copy this reference. And guess what? New version of ML5 out today, 0.4.0. Lots more to say about that in other videos to come. But I'm going to go back to my sketch in the web editor. I'm going to click over to find index.html, and I'm going to add it as one of the libraries right up here in index.html, click Save, and go back to sketch.js, and I'm ready to code. Okay. 
I'm going to add the preload function um, in order to load the sketch RNN model. So I'll make a variable. I'll call it sketch RNN. I'll say sketch RNN equals, and I'll go back to the reference, ML5 sketch RNN model and callback. Oops. Edit, 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 edit. Everybody drink your cocoa. <laughs> um, and the model I want, let's tell the model is, um, hold on a second, is this actually on the documentation page? I don't think so. So let me, just give me a second here. A little behind the scenes. This needs to be on the page, but I'm gonna just grab this. Okay. Oh, wait, hold on. The model that I, the model is a string that indicates what category, what is the thing that I want to draw. And I can actually find a list of all of them here. You'll find that I'll link to this as well. And you can see here's all the options. So I'm going to start with cat, although I'm very tempted to do a cat bus cat pig, and I'll come back to why those even exist in the first place. You can think about that right now and how you might train a machine learning model, why there might be a category that has two words combined. Mm. Halloween, the cat pigs are coming to get you. Ah, cat pig. Um, but I'm going to start with just cat. And I don't need a callback because I'm loading the model in preload. So I can assume that once I get to setup, the model is loaded. And let me run it. No errors. Good sign. Model is loaded. Sketch RNN initialized. And why? Using sketch RNN is actually as easy as just calling a single function, the generate function. So I can say in sketup, <laughs> sketup. I can say in setup, uh, sketch RNN dot generate, and then all I need to do is give it a callback. So this is a moment to go over here. Give it a callback. And the callback I'm going to say got path stroke. I'm not sure what to call this. I'm going to call it stroke path. Got stroke path. And I'm going to write this function, function got stroke path, that receives two arguments, an error in case something went wrong, and then an actual stroke path object. Or I should maybe call this results. I don't know. But I'm going to call it stroke path. And I'm just going to say console.log stroke path. Let's run this and see if anything comes out in the console. I love it when things work. It's like so rare in coding. So this is now the foundation upon which everything else that I do in this example will be built. So let me unpack this for you for a second. A recurrent neural network is a kind of machine learning model that deals with sequential data. That could be text, like R, comma, A, comma, I, comma, N, comma, B. I don't know why I'm putting the commas in there. <laughs> ah, no, no. That could be text, like a sequence of characters, R, A, I, N, B, O, W. It could be text like a sequence of words, chu, followed by chu. It could be music. Maybe a sequence is a melody <laughs> of notes and rhythms, a sequence. Each one of these units in a sequence you can think of as the state. So in this case, the state is very simple. It's a single character. Here it's maybe with words, it's a little more complex. Certainly musical notes, the state might have 
which note is it, what's the amount of time, the duration of that note. Drawing, a drawing can also be thought of as a sequence. Draw, 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 draw. This is a sequence of vector paths or stroke paths as I'm calling them, strokes. They're strokes of a pen. And you'll notice back here in the code, there's a DX, a DY, and a pen, a pen status. So all of the state, each element of the sequence involves a vector path, a change in X, a change in Y, and whether the pen was down or up. Is the pen down? Is the pen up? And there's actually a third state, which is, is the drawing completed, which is end. So if I, all I need to do is figure out a way to say like, okay, you gave me this state. Now I'm going to take that data and visualize it. Interestingly enough, I'm going to visualize it in a very literal form by drawing the path according to that vector in a canvas. But maybe that state could be translated into music or words or some other kind of media. How could you create an audio version of Sketch RNN? That would be something to think about. There is a tricky thing going on here, which is when do I choose to draw? Because if you've used P5 before, you know that there's this function draw that you're asked to write, which is always looping. That's the animation loop. And generally, that's where you want to do your drawing. But the stroke, the data for the stroke has come back in this callback. So I could get rid of the draw loop and do some of my own timing stuff and draw in here. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable. Just, I need to tie my shoe again. I keep stepping on my shoelaces, so I just need to fix this. I'm very glad that the fan uh, seems to be working. Um, okay. People are really worried about the audio. I'm going to... I guess I'm gonna, I just, I just, what I'm seeing is like the audio getting all the way up to the red. I can turn it up a tiny bit. I don't wanna change it, I'm already, is, Mathieu's gonna fix the audio stuff when this gets edited. So I apologies to the, the audio uh, issues that people are having. <clears throat> I'm gonna create a variable called current stroke. Um, and I'm going to, whenever I get a new stroke, I'm gonna say current stroke equals stroke path. Just going to set, I'm going to get the data coming in and set it to a global variable. Then in draw, I'm going to ask if current stroke exists. And I'm actually going to say if it's, yeah, I'm going to say if current stroke, if it exists, I can just do that in JavaScript by just checking if the variable, any variable that has stuff in it will return true if it's an object. Um, then I want to draw a line from some value x, y <laughs> to x plus current stroke dot dx, y plus current stroke dot dy. So in other words, I need some new data here. I need to have this idea of where is the current pen. And this is up to me. This is not part of the model. The model is just telling me relative directions to go. So I'm going to create my own variable called x and y. In setup, let me initialize it to just the center of the canvas. Let me just uh, fill in the background. Uh, with a white background, and then draw this uh, line. Let's say a stroke zero, uh, stroke weight four, so it's a little bit thicker. And let's run this now. There it is, my cat. Meow. <laughs> OK, great. Thank you, CJ. CJ is telling me, be confident in your audio. My drawing, of course, has stopped. <laughs> because I only asked, the generate function just gives me what is essentially the next path, the next vector. So once I have that, I need to ask for another one. So there's a bunch of different ways I could implement this. But for me, the logic is such that setup is going to ask for the first one. Then I'm going to receive it in the callback, draw it, and then right here after I've drawn it, let me ask for the next one. So I can just do exactly this again. 
But what I want to also do, if I'm asking for the next one, let me set current stroke to nothing again. Let me just sort of clear that variable. So the draw, draw might continue to loop, but it won't continue to draw that same stroke over and over again until a new one comes in and fills into that variable. So I think now, if I run this, we're going to see the following. Ah, OK. So <laughs> close. Ah, look at this cat. Meow, 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 meow. Um, what did I forget to do? If you, you, it's on your mind, right? So I drew the vector path, but I didn't move the pen to the next spot. So I need to say x plus equals uh, current stroke dx. And the same thing, y plus equals current stroke dy. Let's try that again. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's a cat. Oh, OK, so I can't erase the background and draw. Because if I do that, and let me take off the console log, um, I, I want to see the drawing continue. I don't want to erase the background. And there we go. Now, this doesn't look exactly right, right? I mean, that's kind of a cat. It's a really scriggly, scraggly cat. But, and I'm realizing I did all this in my Snowflake video, but, you know, hey, this I, I, I could have just picked off from there. But c'est la vie, c'est la blah, blah, blah. <laughs> that's life. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> 82 point five degrees, people. <clears throat> Summertime here on the coding train. It's <laughs> need my tropical drink in the cabana. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> um, the thing that's missing here is I haven't dealt with the pen. I really should only be drawing the line. I always want to move the x and y, but only if current stroke dot pen is down, do I want to actually draw that line? Let's try this now. Hmm. Oh, I spelled that wrong. Let's try this now. Something's off. Hmm. What is off? <sighs> it's so hot in here. This is crazy. Oh, I'm almost to my break, at least, where I can like open the door and get some cool air in here as we look at the brilliant challenges. <sighs> um, I need I need like a nice ice iced drink. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Let's try it one more time. So I'm almost certain I know what the problem is here, which is that the <coughs> It's for the next stroke. Yeah, I know. Oscar e is, uh, is telling me the correct answer. And I, I know this to be the case. I'm just trying to think about how to explain it. I know what the problem is here. And I, I'm having a bit of a sense of deja vu because I went through this in the Snowflake video. But um, if this sequence where every single state has a dx, dy, and a pen state, the pen state is actually describing what you should be doing for the next stroke. It's a little bit weird, but it's off by one. I suppose that's because the drawing always starts with the pen down. Maybe that's not entirely true. I think so, though. I don't know about that. The drawing always starts with the pen down. And also, there's a pen state of end. So when you get a dx, dy, you do that, and then the next thing is end. So this value that comes back in the pen is actually for the next, the next state. So I, I need to think about this in a more clever way. So I'm going to have a separate variable that keeps track of next pen. And it's going to start with down. And uh, then what I'm going to say is if next pen is down, 
which it will be, then draw the line, and then next pen equals current stroke dot pen. So I'll save it for the next time around, and then always pick it up again. And I'll obviously stop if um, next pen is uh, end. So I can say something like, if next pen equals end, I could say, you know, no loop and return. This will just kill the P5 sketch. It will stop. Mm, but I, I do want to draw it first. Oh, no, but it would come next anyway, so I would have drawn it previously. Let's try this. It kind of looks like a cat, right? So this is essentially a perfect re <laughs> So this is essentially a recreation of my Snowflake sketch RNN sketch, um, which I felt like I needed to do just to kind of refresh my memory and look at the new ML5 and make sure it's working in the web editor the way that I want. Because now is the moment, the important part of this video, where I want to pick up a user drawing, a person's drawing who's using this sketch, and feed that in. Well, people are just chatting, just chatting amongst themselves in the chat. Um, but before I do that part, <laughs> uh, I am going to take a short break uh, to talk to you uh, briefly about the Coding Train's uh, sponsor, um, and that is uh, Brilliant.org. So I'm gonna, uh, this is like perfect timing because I also need to take a little break to get some cool air into this room. We're now up to 83 degrees. I have a feeling there's some excellent uh, courses and challenges on the Brilliant website around uh, statistics and temperature and climate. <laughs> you could probably, Simon probably knows where they are and can find them for me. Um, but if you aren't uh, familiar, hold on, let me just click around here for a second. Um, so a Brilliant is, and I've got my fancy new setup here, um, Brilliant is a website which has um, uh, a hands-on approach. So there's actually 60 interactive courses on the website. Most of what I do is on the channel is like look at the daily challenge and that's one of the ways that I enjoy using Brilliant. It's like I have five minutes on the, on the subway, I'm at home, I'm with my kids, so let's look at a fun problem. But it also has full courses in particular. There's a new uh, computer science fundamental courses. Um, and so, um, um, you can see here some of the, the courses. There's actually one on artificial neural networks that I'm really hoping to um, dig into soon. So if you're looking for supplemental material, and, and I mostly mine this for ideas for my coding challenges, um, but there's storytelling, there's code writing, there's interactive challenges, and lots of problems to solve. So you can sign up for free at brilliant.org slash coding train. Um, you can also unlock all of the features and all of the courses through a premium subscription, and the first 200 people to subscribe via that link will get a 20% discount. So what I want to do now uh, quickly is just move over to uh, brilliant.org and look at what the daily challenge is. Now normally, ooh, and I'm, uh, I guess I need to continue this course that I'm doing, <laughs> which is uh, data structures. That would be good. <laughs> I need to do more videos on data structures, so learn more about data structures. Um, but um, I wanted to actually just uh, skip to uh, yesterday's challenge really quickly, because this is what I love. Like This is actually a coding challenge themed around what's in a variable. And one of the things I loved, looked at this yesterday, thank you, Simon, for pointing this out to me, is that this, if you weren't, this to us, right? X equals X plus one is the most normal, <laughs> coherent thing to say. And I actually just used it in my projects, X equals X plus DX. Um, but um, this is actually an absurd statement if you weren't a programmer, uh, because x does not equal x plus 1. That's uh, impossible. It's wrong. It's false. Um, but there's a nice challenge around this. Let's look at it. Um, so if x is a number, y is a number, if you write code like the following, um, I'm going to do this uh, over here. If I were to write x, equals x plus y. So x equals something, y equals something, and y 
then also equals x plus y. And remember, these are two lines of code executing one after another. The value stored in x is greater than the value stored in y. Which one of these is the correct answer? So how after this, basically, uh, x is greater than y would return true. <laughs> this camera does not have a fan on it. <gasps> I thought maybe I was giving this camera a nice little break by moving to this one. I didn't actually turn it off. So this one doesn't have the fan. I'm not so concerned about that because, first of all, it doesn't seem to lose its focus. Or maybe it does and it just, I'm getting lucky with the focus, but it looks still like it's in focus. Um, and I'm using it much less. So, um, so how could this possibly be true? Let's just try some numbers. x is 5, y is 2. So x equals 5 plus 2, I'm going to have 7. And then y equals 7 plus 2, I'm going to have 9. So x, that's not true. So clearly there's got to be something to do with a negative number here. <laughs> we could probably say if x is negative or if y is negative. My instinct is y is negative. I'm probably getting that backwards. Am I getting, let's try. What if y is negative 2? So x equals uh, x plus y. Um, yeah, because if y is negative, x goes down, then y goes further. It's, this is kind of like we're incrementing. So that totally makes sense. I was right. I was right. Ding. Ka-ching. Ba-boom. Um, 5 minus 2 is 3. And then 3 minus 2 is 1. So yeah, I think just as long as y is negative, that's going to be the correct answer. So I like this because I'm like, oh, but this is such a great, if, you were, if you're not a programmer, most of you watching this have done some coding before. If you haven't, welcome. I hope that this is enjoyable and you're following along to the best that you can. I guess I would suggest going back and looking at some of my beginner tutorials or other beginner tutorials you could find. But, um, but I like this because this is really tricky to think through if you haven't coded before. Even a little bit hard for me right now, just because this looks so circular in a weird sort of way. Um, let's go back um, and let's... Uh, try to, uh, what do we, the input value of y was negative. Um, so let's click that. Let's click submit. Correct. I started a one day streak. I kind of want to do today's challenge too. Do I have time? Let's see if we can do it quickly because it looks super interesting like it has a visual pattern. Rearrange the dots. So in the pattern below, we add a new row to the bottom of the triangle to each step. The next term will then be 10 plus 5. So we have 1, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So you're adding 3, adding 4. Oh, you're adding 4 here to get to 10. Right, I see. We could extend this pattern as far as we want, making larger and larger triangles. But is it possible to skip straight to the number of dots in the hundredths triangle? So what's the formula, I guess? Um, oh, yeah, I guess they're showing us the solution. <laughs> I thought I was going to have to figure it out. The solution here. First, second, third, uh, if we rearrange and double the triangle. Oh, look at this. So the idea here is that um, you have a 1 by 2, a 2 by 3, a 3 by 4. So you always have a um, n. If I draw up here, you always have an n by n plus 1. For oh, you can't see that. Everything's okay, everybody. That's actually, I'll use. You always have, uh, you know, some sort of grid that is, for example, three by four. Half of it is this. So you have n times n plus one is the total number of dots. And just divide that by 2 is the half number of dots. So that's the formula. So for 100, you'd have 100 times 100 plus 101 divided by 2. OK, you could do that math in your head or with a calculator. n times n plus And here it is. Ah, I don't have to do that math. It's right here, 5,050. Can you find the pattern in the dots below? Well, this is the same thing, right? It's just n times n plus 1 divide by 2 plus, one plus n. Oh, no, 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 this is a different pattern, right? Oh, because the triangle here is arranged on its side, 
and the triangle here is arranged. So I think, by the way, we can, this is an extra, dot, 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 dot. So there's definitely a, oh, it gives me choices. <laughs> well, it's got to be this one, right? Because it's got to be, I have a plus n. That's what I'm thinking. It's got to have a plus n. Like I could figure out what's the formula. One goes to three, two goes to six, three goes to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Four times five is 20 divided by two is 10. It's got to be this one. So I'm just by eyeballing it, it's this one. <laughs> but why is that? Uh, n plus 1 times n plus 2 is what? Well, let's click on it. <laughs> let's click on it. Let's just see if I'm right just through that sheer instinct. Oh, no, there's a plus n down here. Ah! I'm not 100% confident now. There's, I didn't scroll all the way down. There's another plus n. So, well, first of all, you could do these kind of tests, by the way, test taking skill, you could do process of elimination. Because, for example, uh, 3 plus 1 is 16. I mean, that's not the right answer, is it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That, that's wrong. 3 times 4 is 12 divided by 2 is 6 plus 3 is 9. That's not right. So it's definitely this one. So, like, process of elimination, I could just do it. But there's, um, there's probably a way to draw this. And in the interest of time, ah, uh, there we go. <laughs> I, I answered it correctly. I don't have the chat up. Maybe people are figure, had already mentioned this. Uh, I should get the chat up back up. Sorry about this. I'm, I shouldn't rush through this. I like to let people in the chat. Oh, usually I'll take the break and let people answer it. But ah, I've lost all of my control panels. I forgot about my whole technique here. Uh, n times n plus 1 divided by 2. So Cass is writing this. Um, but uh, if, if I go down here, oh, if you same thing, doubling it, n plus 1 times n plus 2 is the total number of things in a parallelogram. Because these are parallelograms, right? Parallelogram as shown. Let me, is that right? OK, the camera went off again. Well, good news is the fan seems to be working, because this camera doesn't have a fan pointed at it. And that one does. And it's the only one that's, this one is the one that's powering off. Um, so, <clears throat> what time is it? Oh, okay, that's okay. I'm going to take a, a few minute break in a second. Um, so, uh, so, right, one, two, three. Oh, this makes sense, right? Because boy, I don't think I drew that correctly. Oh, and I totally did not draw that correctly. Yeah, hold on. I did. I just drew it in a slightly weird way. Like the way that it's drawn is to is making these uh, so that it's like this. I have three, and then I have three, and this is n equals one. If n, okay. Yeah, I mean, you could, if you consider this n equals 2, <laughs> then you would be right. And, but this is, n, this is for n equals 1. So if n equals 1, you have, uh, you have 3 times 2, which is uh, n plus 1 times n plus 2. And that would be the case for if I add 3 more and then uh, double that. So yes, <laughs> I'm doing this sort of intuitively. There's probably a, a more elegant way that you could uh, describe this, and certainly, uh, what I, one of the things I, is my favorite thing to do is reading other people's solutions and how they explain it. Oh, look at this! That's cool. Even with some like nice mathematical notation, I like how this is drawn. Um, oh, look at this! And then like with some, this is great. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a break. If you don't already have a brilliant.org uh, account, you can sign up right now. If anybody has the inclination uh, to make a P5 sketch that visualizes this with like maybe n as a slider um, and then shows the total number. That would be something you could do. Um, um, it's something that I uh, enjoy doing. And then you, I like to post my code solution um, here in the comments on Brilliant. So I'm going to take a short break. Um, I'm going to leave this up here. I am going to actually turn the camera off just to let it cool down a little bit. I'm going to prop open the door. I'm going to take a break just for um, maybe two or three minutes.
I gotta come back quickly and say that Katja and Cass are discussing that when n equals one, the triangle has a base of two. Um, so that's exactly right. Tune and the internet will fix that for me. Sing it with me. It's the forward to Cartesian coordinate song. 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 And we're back. The lights are off, the door is open, the lights are down low, it's quiet. We're going to go back to doing Sketch R and Ed. Thank you to Brilliant for the sponsorship. Um, I'm going to, uh, I've got the temperature down to 82 degrees. A balmy 82. It was at 83.5. We're now at 82. I'm going to turn the lights back on going to warm up in here. Oh, the sun is coming up. It is getting bright. Oh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the coding train. We're back from our break. We're going to finish making this interactive sketch RNN project. <laughs> I have about a half an hour to do this before I've really got to go, <laughs> uh, which I think is quite realistic. So hopefully nothing will go terribly wrong. Um, and, oh, I gotta get the RDP algorithm in here. Oh, got stuff to do, stuff to do. No time for chit chat. No time for chit chat. <clears throat> now I have this cat and it is the correct generated drawing, a duplicate of what I did in the Snowflake uh, Sketch RNN challenge, but here I am ready to add the next component, which is a person <laughs> coming here, drawing their own starter path, and then having Sketch RNN take over. How would I do that? So one of the things that I have to revisit is this state, right? Once again, I need to all, the state, any given state. <laughs> Are the lights on? Yeah. I need to revisit the state. So any given moment of the drawing is a dx, a dy, and a pen state. So I need to collect a sequence of those from the person who is drawing. So one way I can do that is I want to, uh, I'm, the drawing, I'm not going to be too sophisticated about this. I'm going to have the user start the drawing when they click the mouse and stop when they release the mouse. So I basically want two events that are tied to the canvas. So I'm going to store the canvas in a variable. And I'm going to say canvas mouse pressed start drawing and canvas dot mouse, pre uh, mouse released. Um, I, I want to say finish drawing, but it's not finished. A sketch RNN. I can say sketch RNN start. So I no longer want to call generate. 
right here in setup. I'm not going to start generating. I'm going to first collect the data from the user. Um, and function start drawing. Presumably right here is where I'm going to start generating the drawing, right? Sketch RNN start. So I need a, what I'm going to call this is the seed path. It's what I'm putting into the machine learning model for it to begin to, it's the seed path. It's what I'm seeding the machine learning model with. So seed path is an array and um, I'm going to say, I'm going to have a, vari a, a variable called person drawing, which is false. And as soon as I, as soon as start drawing happen, person drawing will go to true. Because in draw, I'm going to say if person drawing, I want to collect those states. So what are the states? The stroke path is an object which has a dx, a dy, and a pen state. Well, the pen is always going to be down. Again, I could do something more sophisticated where I could have an interaction that the, u the person, the user, could actually draw, stop, pick up, do different things, and then have SketchRNN know how to take over. But by definition, the way I'm building this is when the mouse is released, SketchRNN takes over. So the pen is always down. And dx is I can use built-in variables of P5. It stores the current mouse position minus the previous mouse position. So this is actually really easy to do in P5 because I have these uh, values already. So the difference between the current mouse and the previous mouse, uh, dx, dy, and the pen is down. Then I can say uh, seed path dot push stroke path. And um, then when the mouse is released, sketch RN and start, person drawing is false. Let's give this a try. OK, big problem. I don't see what I'm drawing. <laughs> that would be nice. Oh, but it drew a cat as soon as I released the mouse. So I need to add something in draw, which does the following. Hmm. I guess I just want to draw. I want to do exactly what I did here. So let's universally, let's set stroke 0, stroke weight 4. And let's just take this line function, put it here. And I want to draw x, y, x plus, stroke path. And then I want to say uh, the same thing. I want to do this. So again, there might be a way to consolidate this code. And but. There it is. So this now, at least I should see what I'm drawing. Whoa. OK, that's weird. Oh, boy. Try this again. What just happened there? Oh. Oh, it's drawing everything relative to the mouse, relative to the center. That's not good. <laughs> Aha. So the first point that I'm drawing is actually uh, ah, okay. So x and y don't get initialized in the center. Of course, of course, of course. x and y get initialized when I start drawing wherever the mouse is. All right, that should fix this problem. Here's my cat. Now continue drawing my cat, weird. Wait, I drew the circle. I drew the cat's face already. Try this again. So it's picking up where I left off, but it seems to be starting the drawing over. Why? <laughs> because I never told the model, the SketchRNN model, about my seed strokes in the first place. Right? I still just call sketchRNN.generate that first time. But guess what? The generate function can take as an additional optional argument an array of states that are fed into the model. And I have those already in seed path. Is that what I called it? So now, drum roll please, I believe this is the last detail. There's plenty more I want to say and a couple more things I want to do, but this is the last sort of key detail here. Uh, 
and it didn't really come out like a nice cat. Let's try this one more time. That was good, but there's a, I got lucky. So it sort of worked, it sort of didn't work. There is an issue, there is something really important that I need to implement. And actually it's my intention for this to actually become a feature of ML5 and it's gonna handle it for you automatically. But that hasn't been implemented yet in ML5, so in this video I'm gonna try it out. And then maybe in a future video I'll do a video about adding this as a feature to ML5. Um, and it has to do with the RDP line simplification algorithm, which guess what? If you look at the previous coding challenge, what a coincidence. It is the RDP line simplification algorithm. So why does this matter? Let's go back to the example. Let's go back to this example here. And I'm gonna do something. Pay close attention. I'm gonna hit clear. I'm gonna zoom way in close. And I'm gonna draw very, very slowly a lot of squiggly lines like this, really, really slowly. And watch what happens when I lift up the mouse. Ready, one, two, three. Do you see how the drawing changed? The some of, it's very subtle, but some of the points that I was drawing were removed. The, the fidelity of the line was lowered. Um, even though it's capturing, I'm capturing the mouse positions in my sketch at presumably 60 frames per second, I'm capturing a lot of points. So I'm giving the machine learning model, the sketch RNN model, all of these states where the dx and dy values are really, really tiny. But it wasn't actually trained with data. With, uh, the data, the drawings that are stored in the QuickDraw data set aren't necessarily, um, what am I trying to say? The model wasn't actually trained with drawings that have a super high fidelity to them with lots and lots of points close together. Um, I, I'm actually not sure whether if that's in the original quick draw data set or whether that was like a processing of the data, but um, one of the researchers at Google wrote a GitHub issue on the ML5 repository explaining, actually no, that wasn't a GitHub issue. I filed the issue based on an email. Um, I was in touch with David Ha who explained that is that what I want to say? Yeah. I was in touch with David Ha, who explained that the RDP algorithm was used to simplify the drawings uh, when the model was trained. And so when you're feeding stuff into it, you want to have those drawings retain that quality. So let's move back over here. Let's find my code. And give me a second here, everybody. I think it might actually be not in. Did I put it in coding train? Let's see because I didn't create the web page for it yet, because I'm behind on a lot of things. Interactive drawing, no there isn't. I think I, for whatever silly reason, I put it here under a different uh, P5 web editor account. Oh, there's an extra character here. Oh, I don't have the Slack channel open, and I see all these notifications. Help, camera help guide for setting auto temperature off. Thank you, uh, CJ. Uh, where is it? I made, right, I'm gonna have to go to my class. Did I just call it? No. Let me go to uh, github.com. Give me a second here. Um, by the way, if you're wondering what I'm looking at, I'm finding the repo for the course that I'm teaching at NYU. Um, I encourage you to check out all the materials if you're interested, but I'm looking for here. I'm looking for the uh, P5 RDP example. Oh, it was in Coding Train, and it's called Coordinated Bagel. That's why I didn't see it. Coding Challenge, I forget what number it was, 151 or two, just say uh, RDP. Here is the code for the last coding challenge, which is the RDP line simplification algorithm. And I'm just simplifying a sort of mathematical curve just to recreate uh, the animation that's on the Wikipedia page for the RDP algorithm. But I should be able to take these functions. Uh, oh, I realize there's going to be something tricky about this. Oh, everything is more complicated than I think. Because this is, but I can, I can do this. I can do this.
I'm going to create another file called um, rdp.js. I'm going to reference it here in index.html. And I just want to see. I'm going to grab my implementation of the RDP algorithm, which includes all four of these functions. You can watch the other video to see me write those functions. I'm going to paste them all here. And what I want to call is just RDP. So I give the RDP function an array of all, a whole bunch of points. Then I, and I also give it an empty array that it's going to fill with the RDP reduced points. And it requires a global variable. Hmm. The way I created the example was with a global variable called epsilon. So I'm just going to sort of hard code in a value for that at 10 um, right here. And then now, right before I generate the seed path, I need to. Um, I need to perform RDP line simplification. All right, so interestingly enough, the RDP algorithm doesn't know anything about sketch RNN and DX, DY, and Penn State. So actually, what I want to do is I want to have another, <laughs> another array called seed points. And I, those are what I actually want to collect. Oh, I, made, I, I made this kind of overcomplicated. It's OK. <laughs> Got to figure this out. I want to collect oh, It's so hot in here. It, I'm almost 84 degrees. <laughs> it's a sauna. It's like very hard to think when it's this hot. I'm going to comment this out. Uh, this is going to become important again, but I'm going to say seed points push uh, create vector mouse x mouse y. And then I want to draw, I'm just curious here. I'm, think, I'm really thinking this through here. And then the line that I want to draw is actually just mouse x, mouse y, p mouse x, p mouse y. So let's try this. this so the drawing still works. Weirdly, what happens with the first one? Something weird is happening with the first one. No, it's normal. Okay. I think that's just if I if I do this and then no. Okay, never mind. Um, sorry. So the drawing works still. <laughs> that was interesting. And then I get the cat. <laughs> There's no seed points, so <laughs> this weird extra cat happened. Um, okay. All right, I got it now. Now I'm going to create uh, an empty array of RDP points. I'm going to call the RDP function with 
start index, end index, all points, RDP points. Again, I might want to rethink how that function was created, but it is, uh, oh, you know what I can do? Now what I want to do is perform the RDP line simplification. So I can actually go back to my previous example once again. And I can, sorry everybody, this is what I'm looking for. <laughs> what I want to do is perform the uh, RDP line simplification now. So I can go back to my previous example once again and basically find exactly this code. So I'm going to grab this code and I'm going to put it here. And what this is doing is it's creating a new empty array and it's calling the RDP function uh, on the all points array, which is now called seed points. Um, and filling it with the simplified version of the line. And then what I need to do after that is now I have this RDP points, which is the simplified version of the line. I want to say for let i equal 0, i is less than RDP points. I'm going to actually start at 1. Uh, RDP points dot length, i plus plus. And I need to create the state now. So remember, where, where was I doing that before? Right here. This is exactly what I want to do. I want to create the stroke path, which is RDP points index i, I dot x minus the previous one, i minus 1. Do the same thing for y. And then the pen is down. Then I can, I, I could redraw, I'm not going to redraw anything, just for a second. And then I want to put that into the stroke path. And then call generate. All right, well, I, I, that was a little, I'm manic here, which I guess all of my coding challenges are pretty manic. <laughs> but what just happened? Again, the idea ultimately is for ML5 to handle this. I think that's what I would like to do. I would like to create a helper function in ML5 that SketchRNN takes your seed path in and like performs the line simplification for you. But this is my coding challenge to implement it manually to see if it helps. So what I'm doing here is I have the set of points that I've collected in seed points. I call the RDP algorithm, which simplifies that path. Previous coding challenge goes through that in more detail. Then I have to generate the states based off the simplified path, and then that's what I put into the sketch RNN model. Not feeling super confident here, but let's give this a try. And it looks the same, but I think if, if I'm correct, if I did this many, many times, I would have better results. Coordinated bagel. Um, <clears throat> there's something else really important here. 1140, OK. Um, I think, however, it's very important that I create that same visual effect where I redraw the simplified line. And that's actually a pretty easy thing for me to do right here. Because what I can do is in sketch RNN start, after I do the line simplification, I can redraw the background. And then I can say begin shape. I, can, I, I should have been uh, end shape. And I'm going to say uh, for uh, let v of seed path. I'm just getting all the vectors out of the seed path. Uh, vertex v dot x, v dot y. Um, and uh, I'm going to say uh, no fill. I should have. I've already been drawing, so but just to be consistent, let me take this here. Where is that? Let me take this here. And uh, put that here. So now I, I'm drawing and drawing and drawing, erasing it, and then drawing the simplified line 
Let's see how that goes. Mm, it, I didn't see it. What did I do wrong here? Oh no, not the seed path. Seed points. And I should be doing this before, technically speaking, it doesn't really matter, but this is what I want to do here. So this is performing the line simplification. Drawing, and line isn't really right, but simplify path, path simplification. And then now uh, converting, converting to sketch RNN states. All right, let's try this one more time. Let's see. Did, you, did that simplify? <laughs> it's hard to see. Let's try like a, a much higher epsilon, like 100. Yeah, oh yeah, it did. It's just not super obvious. But 100 is crazy. Just to prove the point. Let me prove the point here when we do this. Hmm. I'm not sure that this is actually like doing what I think it's going to do. Let me do some debugging here. Whoops. Oh, no, 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 no. Ah! Oh, coding, coding, whoops, whoops, whoops. <laughs> RDP points, people. RDP points. RDP points. Simplified line is in RDP points, not in the seed points. The seed points was everything I collected. The simplified one is called RDP points. My, I, I should use better naming. Now, I think, let me go back. <laughs> And change the epsilon back to 10, something more reasonable. And we're going to try this one more time. I'm going to draw it slowly so that there's a lot of extra points. And I'm going to make a like weird curve here. Here we go. One, two, three. There we go. <laughs> so that looked like it really simplified it like way too much. So I this would be an interesting thing to tune because I want this to be in, uh, this will be like sort of a hard-coded value probably in ML5, although maybe it's a parameter the, the, the user of ML5 could adjust. But this is what I would want to sort of play with to figure out what makes the most sense. Um, but now I can really see the line simplification happening. Um, you know, what it should actually be, I have no idea. Whoops. Um, let's go back to five. So before I go, so as always with any of these coding challenges, I'm doing just a really sort of basic version. I think that I have mostly successfully recreated exactly this. But one of the things you'll notice is that um, there's a lot more thoughtfulness to the interface and the design. First of all, it's drawing over and over again. What, what SketchRNN is drawing is a different color. There's a nice interface for picking which model you want to load. You can kind of like randomize uh, stuff and clear it. And there's a page of information all about how this works. So maybe you want to create your own version and think about what is that interaction design? How are you visualizing what the person is drawing versus what the model is drawing? And how are you picking which model to draw? Maybe you can make this into a game, um, an art project, something that is, does, tells a story, uh, that draws based on you know words that you know, text to speech or speech to text or something like that. There's so many ideas that I think you would explore. So I hope you make one of those ideas and share it with me by going to thecodingtrain.com and following the instructions about how to share your community contribution. But I will, before I go, just kind of give you a nice compilation. I think one of the things that I, uh, I want to return to is all the different uh, 
pre-trained models that are available. Now, you, you could also train your own model, which would be a really interesting thing to try. Very high degree of difficulty there, but possible. But the reason why I'm assuming there are models in here that are, in addition to frog, there's frog sofa, is because the frog model was trained with only drawings of frogs. The frog the sofa model was trained with drawings of sofa. The frog sofa model was drawings of both without a distinction between the two. So the AI, the machine learning model, is just learning about paths that happen when you're drawing frogs and sofas. And so we could try crab, rabbit, face, pig, but I'm just gonna enjoy myself and try the everything model. And I'll see you in the next coding challenge. Oh, it doesn't go over and over again. How do I? Oh, wait a second. I wanted to do it again and again. So <laughs> let's at least add that here as well. So if the state is end, hold on, everybody. Instead of saying no loop, what I want to do is actually call sketch rnn.reset, which will reset the model, and then call sketch rnn start again. Is that what the function was called? And so if I reset the model, call start again, it's going to draw a new version. No? Maybe? Maybe not. Maybe why did that break? <laughs> uh, so let's see. The model is reset. It performs RDP again. Draw, should draw it again. Like this is fine. The seed points haven't changed. And then it should create, oh, the seed path. Here's the mistake. When I'm, I'm resetting everything, I don't need to do all this again, but I might as well. <laughs> so I could refactor this. But um, at a minimum, what I need to do is, uh, actually, I don't need to do any of this, because seed path is a global variable. So, but I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to reset seed path. So yes, I need to refactor this, but I, I don't want to add all the seed points to the seed path again. So let's try this. What will the model draw? Enjoy. <laughs> no, it's not working still. What did I miss? Let's look at the chat. Next pen, uh, next pen. Oh, this, so this return is a problem. Current stroke also should be set to null. I think. Oh, and next pen should be set to down. So I think I need next pen to not be end anymore, and uh, current stroke to null. Oh, this is really going to work. Please work. <laughs> what did I forget to reset? So many things. I guess I could deep, I should do some more. Person drawing is false. Current stroke is null. All right, let's do some. Reset the seed path. RDP points is reset. Mm. What else do I need to reset? I'm doing things in weird places, which concerns me. Hmm. 
All right, I'm going to need to. Let's put this console log back in. Oh, wait. Let's also put that in. Oh. Oh, oh! X and Y! X and Y! X and Y! I didn't think about X and Y. That's definitely a thing. So when you start the drawing, X is at mouse X, mouse Y. No, but that's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, oh, wait a second. Ooh, this is, a, this is the problem. That's weird. Uh, I actually never moved. I think this was wrong all in the first place because this needs to be in there. I need to move x, y, and then I need to also reset x, y, or actually what would make sense is for, um, x equal RDP points, um, the last one, right? x and y need to just be wherever this leaves off, the last one. I think this is the last thing I forgot to reset which I didn't even set for the first time, x, y needs to like pick off where we left off, I think. All right, here we go. I'm just going to draw a line. The monsters are coming to get you, the sketch RNN monsters. OK, thanks, everybody. <laughs> Goodbye. Enjoy these drawings. You know what? No, no. I can't live with this. I'm going to leave you with rainbows. Um, and I'm going to take out the console log. All right, everybody. Rainbows and rainbows. <laughs> Is rainbow not one of the models? It's one of the uh, quick rate it quick draw. No, it's not one of the models. What about unicorn? No, there's no unicorn model. I guess we have to just go with cats. Let's do cat pigs or elephant pigs. Cat pigs. Let's do cat pigs. Cat pigs are fun. I will leave you with, wrong sketch. I will leave you with cat pigs. Let's get this, uh, I don't know which one is the one I want. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. <laughs> and now I will leave you with the cat pigs. <laughs> Hold on, let me refresh this again. And I will say goodbye to you <laughs> by letting you watch a compilation of sketch RNN drawn cat pigs.
This is way too much fun. Oh, there's a cat pig. Um, all right, so this live stream is now over, officially, as of 20 minutes ago. <laughs> I did somehow make it through all of this. Uh, the fan is definitely the solution. I'm taking a picture of the uh, thermostat so I can send it to the building to um, um, uh, let me see what makes the how do I how do I do this let's take a picture it's 84.6 degrees in this room right now um, <coughs> okay uh, thank you, everybody. Um, I wish that I had more time to look at some community contributions, to play uh, Noisy Foo. Check out noisyfoo.io. <laughs> um, maybe I can answer a couple questions um, from the chat. Um, Simon is suggesting cat bus. Um, Simon is also reminding me that the last coding challenge isn't out yet. It is prepared. Um, so I will be releasing that um, as an unlisted member only video. I mean, it, it's all in the live stream, but the edited version of it later today. And then as soon as the uh, closed captioning is completed, then it will go public on YouTube. The second Coding in the Cabana video with the Colots Conjecture should come out sometime within the next few weeks. <laughs> a lot of, uh, and um, I'll be back. I actually have something semi-special planned for next Friday. I do need to take a week off, not a week off from making content, but a week off from public live streaming because I have a video that I'm planning which is relates to training your own machine learning model. Um, that's a collaboration with a project. That's not, a, it's only in beta. So um, I'm gonna record that at some point. So if you're wondering if you're, uh, I, I will do that as a member only live stream, the recording session of that. Um, so, but I do wanna do a live stream. I definitely wanna do a live stream next Friday probably going to be, might be in, probably going to be in the afternoon time slot. I think I'm going to be doing it later in the day next Friday. So if you're looking for when next Friday is going to be, it's probably going to be that. I don't know what just happened. Let's try to beat my noisy foo high score one more time. Oh, you don't have the sound. <laughs> it's very important that you have the sound. I'm really terrible at this. I can't even get one. Holy shit, man. <laughs> Uh, when will you post a processing challenge? The RDP challenge is um, actually was done in processing, so that will be posted soon. Um, and actually, the Colots Conjecture uh, Cabana video I did with processing as well. And Redfoo is there in the chat. All right, since Redfoo is here in the chat, we're going to, even though I have a meeting that starts in two minutes, it, the good news is the meeting is within two minutes walk from where I am. And I just point out, it's 84.6 degrees in here. Um, I, I, don't, uh, I have a, I, you know, uh, here we go. Ready? Here we go. <coughs> I'm going to get to three. My goal is to get to three. Ba, ba, ba. Bow. <sighs> om, 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 om. <laughs> That's so terrible. Om, om. Oh. Ah, my back is broken. Oh, yeah. That is really, my back is broken. <clears throat> bum, 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 ba -dum, bum, bum, bum. Ugh, what the fuck? <laughs> or I'd like to say, 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 la, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> That's French for, it's just blah, 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 blah. <laughs> da, 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 da. Da, oh, there's got to be some way of like regulating. I got four. Yes. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. See you next week on the coding train. <sighs> I've got to go. Somebody's applauding outside. <laughs> don't, don't, don't encourage me. Oh, I can hear me in the hallway. I'm so embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed. <sighs> so <alive. sighs> Bye, everybody. See you next week. I gotta go. No signal. No signal. It's really what it's about. Right? No signal. No signal. Goodbye. So this is random, this is noise, pearly noise that is, in the core random algorithm, the actual random algorithm itself, those numbers aren't related at all. You pick, like, I'm picking random numbers between 0 and 10. 9, 2, 7, 6, 1, 9, 4, 8, 9, 2, 1, 3. I pick 9 a lot, apparently. But with pearly noise, I might pick numbers like this. Two, three, four, three, four, five, six, five, four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, seven, six. Boy, this is like pearly noise performance art. Nine, two, seven, six, one, nine, four, eight, nine, two, one, three. I think nine one. Two, three, four, three, four, five, six, five, four. Boy, this is like pearly noise performance art. Seven, five, nine, two. Seven, six, one, nine, four, eight. But with curly noise, I might pick numbers like this. Two, three, four, three, four, five, six, five, four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, five. Pearly noise, that is. Pearly noise. So this is pearly noise, that is. Pearly noise. This is this is pearly noise, that is. Pearly noise. So this is pearly noise, that is. Pearl pearly noise. Pearl pearly noise, that is. Pearly noise. So this is pearly noise, that is. Pearly noise. This is this is pearly noise, that is. Pearly noise. So this is pearly noise, that is. Pearl pearly noise. Pearl pearly noise, that is. Pearly noise. This is pearly noise, that is. Pearly noise. This is pearly noise, that is. Pearly noise. This is pearly noise, that is. Pearl pearly noise. But with pearly noise, I might pick numbers like this. Two, three, four, three, four, 
Well, this is like Pearl and Noise performance art.